Hello and welcome to the second video of how to prepare for forestry option for IFOS 2020 and also 2021. So in my first uh, video, I have uh, informed you how we are going to proceed. We started with silviculture general and I have discussed the kind of questions which are being asked and uh, the weightage in terms of marks allotted for that particular subsection. So uh, in this second video, I'll be uh, talking about the next subsection. So just to give you a, a overall clear idea, uh, let me go to my pointer. Okay, so uh, as you know, there are two papers, section A and section B in both the papers. I have discussed about the marks which will be allotted. So we started with section A and uh, in section A, we have completed silviculture general, the general aspects, what are the important topics which you should be concentrating and uh, what are the different kind of questions which are being asked and how much of marks, marks has been allotted uh, in the previous 10 years. So in today's lecture, I'll be taking up silviculture systems and I'll be discussing more about this subsection which I would like to call it as. So uh, first of all, we will be seeing the syllabus, how the syllabus is been given in the UPSC notification. So it starts with clear filling, uniform shelter wood, selection copies, conversion systems, management of silviculture systems, uh, temperate, subtropical, humid, dry tropical, coastal forest, uh, with special reference to plantation silviculture, choice of species, establishment and management, enrichment methods, technical constraints, mechanized methods, aerial seeding, thinning and other things, right? So you can see that it is a little haphazard. You um, have to select each and every word. Every word is important, but you cannot proceed in this way. It will be too much of confusing. So I have uh, rearranged for you, which I'll be talking about uh, in a while. Before going there, let's try to see uh, the kind of marks allocation for silviculture systems. So this is the second part. As uh, yesterday I have discussed, a lot of questions do come from silviculture general. And compared to silviculture general, the number of questions or the marks which has been uh, allotted for the question asked from silviculture systems is less. So silviculture general attracts more marks and systems comparatively attracts less marks but it is still more than the marks allotted for the other two subsections that is what you have to understand so that you can focus on uh, how much of time you should give how much of importance you should give to this uh, part so you can see here I have taken the marks allocation starting from 2010 till 2019 for the ten, past 10 years and in the past 10 years uh, earlier they used to ask a question uh, from silviculture system which would account for around 30 marks, 255 marks question and two 1010 marks questions. Later on the next year it was same in 36, 38, 48, 46. In 2016, there were many questions asked from this section. So they have uh, changed the kind of pattern. So now the pattern would be like in a single question, there would be two, three parts, like what are silviculture system? What are the advantages of se selection system? What uh, uh, are the different kinds of resultant uh, forest which you'll get? So that kind of question in a single question that would altogether account for 20 marks. Okay, 4 plus 4 plus, uh, you know, 10 plus 2, like that. So that kind of question started coming in 2016. Later on in 2017, 43 marks, 48 marks. And in the latest paper in 2019, the number of questions uh, asked uh, would account to around 50 marks. So that will give us an idea that 
the importance of silviculture system is little less than silviculture general it is basically the application part of silviculture general whatever the aspects you study in silviculture general that will be reflected that will be applied in silviculture systems right so uh, we will be uh, seeing more what kind of questions are being asked and what what are the important topics which you have to discuss in this so comparatively in the terms of duration you know if you watch uh, our video the time allotted or the time required to watch the videos of silviculture systems are little lesser than silviculture general now i would like to rearrange the uh, entire syllabus into uh, four main sections under which you will be studying so the first one is silviculture systems the classification so how the classification is been done of the entire silviculture system so i have even given you a, a very brief idea of the classification in my next slide i'll come to that so once we study the classification we'll go to the types pattern advantage of individual uh, you know classification systems then there is a important part called as conversion which is not uh, you know uh, uh you know it, it is a part of the system but not included in the in any of the system it is dealt separately and many of the questions do come from conversion and there are some miscellaneous topics which you have to discuss so i will give you this uh, you know broad classification basically the silviculture systems are classified into two types one is the high forest system and the coppice forest system you know, you you must be knowing the basic idea of what exactly is coppice these are the shoots which arise from the lateral buds when you cut down a tree even though it has a seedling origin once the tree is grown and once it is cut off so from the lateral buds some shoot starts arising they are called as coppice or coppice so the forest which would have developed from this particular kind of growth that is called as coppice forest so these are the two main broad classification of forest under silviculture system high forest system and coppice forest system and under high forest system there are three the next level categorization system of concentrated regeneration system of diffused regeneration and accessory systems concentrated regeneration you will be concentrating only on one part of the forest and uh, you will be doing a regeneration part by part under this there are basically two systems one is clear filling system very very important and shelter root system under clear filling system there is a normal clear filling system clear filling strip system and alternate strip system so individually you will be studying what is clear filling system and what are the kind of uh, uh, filling pattern which you will be uh, doing so what exactly it is how do we differentiate uh, it from other systems in terms of area allocated what kind of resultant crop will be obtained after that what are the advantages of these systems what are the disadvantages of these system what is the pattern of felling followed in this particular system and that is what we are going to study uh, in this particular clear filling system or in fact in any of the system in either in a uniform uh, shelter wood system uh, group shelter wood system strip shelter wood system uh, irregular system indian irregular system right and uh, in selection system so single tree selection group tree selection systems in all these systems we will be following a pattern you know that is what need to be done in order to remember the things and recall the things so you will be studying initially what exactly it is what kind of allocation is done for the forest what are the uh, patterns of felling in this what are the tending activities which you are going to carry out what are the advantages of this system and what are the disadvantages of this system and the questions which are asked from this are direct how do you manage the forest under selection system how a clear felling system is different from shelter root system so what is the pattern of felling in a uniform shelter root system say for example in uniform shelter root system you will be uh, you know felling the forest in three different installments right the seedling felling secondary felling primary felling and the resultant crop would be different you know that will be even crop in selection system the resultant crop would be uneven forest that means all aged forest trees will be present at any 
point of the year you know whenever you go to the forest you will be finding different aged trees present at all the time so clear filling system you will be having even aged right how do you do the filling and other things and in accessory systems you have two storage high forest high forest reserve and also there is one more called as improvement filling so under this it has uh, been missing in this flow chart so individually we are taking up a system we are knowing part by part and then following it uh, you know uh, remembering it you know it is easy for you to uh, differentiate once you know the details you know once you understand what is happening so it is very easy very easy to understand if you uh, actually give a little bit of concentration on that or otherwise this is going to jumble up so please be very careful while reading make short notes and uh, you should remember each and every one of this every system is important here so then we come to copies forest in copies forest we have simple copies copies with two rotations shelter wood copies systems uh, copies with standard copies with reserve copies with selection and not even a single year they haven't asked anything from these systems they have asked even though the marks allocation is very low the kind of questions which has been asked here will be uh, you know definite so you'll be uh, knowing the pictures you know there'll be beautiful pictures which illustrates how the felling is done how the plantation looks like that pictorial memory will uh, help you a lot in recreating your answer in the examination hall so uh, that is that is what uh, is all about these systems so once you are done with this there are some miscellaneous things see here i have mentioned in the systems the types patterns advantages disadvantages then which applicability what are what what are the forest in which it is ap applicable right so what are the uh, comparisons okay what are the factors governing the selection of any of the system so all these things should be discussed and all these things should be studied while uh, you know studying the silviculture systems after that there is conversion conversion of one system to another system so almost every year or every alternate year there is one question on conversion how do you uh, what is conversion how do you convert from this a kind of silviculture system to that kind of silviculture system there is there is a system there is a, a methodology which you have to adopt in order to follow this there are some miscellaneous topics like you know management of uh, roadside avenues then uh, management of canal plantations right so there was one one more terminology which is not given in the syllabus which is called as uh, deverwood uh, deverwald system so where like you know you will be keeping an ideal forest as your uh, you know uh, target and trying to achieve to uh, uh, trying trying to go to that level or bring your forest to that ideal condition so this is what uh, is some of the miscellaneous topics you will also study some of the management of tropical forests subtropical forest temperate forests and coastal areas so here mainly you will be uh, getting a very brief introduction of forest classification so how forest is classified uh based upon the classification system given by champion and seth so this is a repetition where you will also be studying an entire classification of forests under section b of paper 2 in ecology and ethnobotany there is a separate heading given under the uh, in the syllabus called as forest types so there will be individually studying different kinds of forest how they are classified what is the basis and what are the symbols what kind of species are present and based on that there are many times the question has been asked like you know arrange the following uh, in 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 a uh, mountain starting from highest elevation to the lowest elevation they have asked a question where they have uh, given uh, give uh, the uh, 
the silviculture management of coastal areas give the how do you manage temperate and subtropical and uh, sub temperate and temperate forests all together so here you will be looking into the management aspects how you are going to uh, manage the forest in tropical regions what are the different kind of silviculture systems you are adopting what kind of uh, tending operations you will be following what kind of thinning you will be following and all these aspects so this is a very broad uh, explanation of how the questions are being asked and what is there and one important thing which i would let you know that see after the prelims uh, you know that for civil service examination or like you know ias mains which is generally called as civil service examination mains and uh, you know ifos mains forestry is not available as an option for uh, civil service examination it's not there in the list uh, so after prelims even the prelims is same for both the civil service examination mains and indian forest service examination so after the prelims based on your cut off you will be selected based on whether you have applied for both the exams or a single exam so you will get a call for writing the mains usually the number of seats in indian forest service is lesser and that is the reason less number of people will be called to write ifos mains examination and because of that the cut off marks for ifos mains will be higher so usually it will be higher and for uh, civil service examination mains the cut off will be lower 5 to 6 marks lower or sometimes even more so that uh, makes uh it possible that all the aspirants who are writing civil service examination uh, mains will definitely write ifs examinations or, or like you know if sorry it's otherwise those who are writing ifs mains will definitely be eligible to write the civil service examination mains there are very few candidates who only or purely attempt for ifs mains and there are many people who purely write civil service mains because they fail to cut off the indian forest service uh, cut off so people who are writing civil service mains if they are qualified to do this if they have applied they will definitely write civil service uh, ifs mains and because of that you will get a lot of people who give maximum attention to civil service examination mains and they give very little attention to ifs mains there will be one month gap after the civil service examination mains to the indian forest service examination and within that gap they try to cover up the second option usually they'll be having one option uh, only one optional subject for civil service examination mains and that they will keep it as same for indian forest service and the remaining option which usually will be forestry or geology smaller topics they will keep it uh, for studying after their civil service examination mains and within that time they would mostly uh, try to cover up the entire syllabus in that time through a crash course or other things and we uh, in our institution will get a request that like you know this is our option and we have to cover it within this time and they usually try to answer the questions which are mostly or related to the questions which are there in civil service examination mains like uh, if you see in forestry in section b of paper 1 there is agroforestry there is environment there is biodiversity there is soils and uh, there is uh, general social social forestry tribology okay and in paper 2 of uh, forestry section b you have ecology ethnobotany you have uh, environmental legislations so you have uh, some basic uh, you know economical concepts demand and supply and other things that will be easier for those students who haven't exclusively prepared for forestry so the choice of questions which they usually go for will be those questions which are which are related to the generalized topics but from the experience i can tell you that those questions 
will not actually fetch much marks because they are not purely a forestry uh, you know subjects they some kind of overlap with the general studies gs uh, of civil service examination even in paper 3 of civil service examination you have environment ecology biodiversity and other uh, things so most of the things will overlap and it will be a generalized question so those who study this question you know these portions uh, exclusively will have an upper hand on them uh, because they will be answering the questions from this part and they are very very particular so it is not opinion based question so the if if they ask clear filling system you have to answer what is it what is the kind of crop you get what are the advantages disadvantages that's a fixed answer so even the evaluator might not be knowing uh, much more than that so uh, you will be awarded with maximum marks maximum marks which could be allotted so on these cumulative small small marks added up will take your marks to the highest so that is the reason why i every time suggest the students that please attend the questions from forestry core subjects from forest management forest mensuration uh, survey and engineering silviculture general and silviculture systems this will fetch you much more marks than answering the questions related to the general topics which which i will be discussing anyway in the coming videos but this is what is a secret this is what is a secret to uh, fetch more marks so having said that uh, this uh, is a paper which is easier to understand and once you know it it is very difficult to forget it and uh, after that it is easy to answer and reproduce the answer you have a very structured answers and if you take the test series then definitely you will be writing that answers that will be evaluated and that you will be uh, given the model answers uh, how you have to approach and that will refine your preparation so that will refine and you will be able to write a very good answer which would fit much more marks in your mains so you can get uh, called for the interview okay so these are some of the resources uh, which you can refer so there is a book called theory and practice of silviculture system by ram prakash and ls karna a must read book so they have individually discussed uh, many of the systems but this systems also contains some extra information which is not there in the syllabus and which has not been asked since past 20 years you know i have analyzed the past 20 years of uh, questions so there are some extra information you should be very careful in reading it so this is basically uh, see basically there is no particular book written exclusively for ifs there is one book manikandan and prabhu but that will not give you sufficient material to represent in the answers so that you can get sufficient good marks so it is like an extension of synopsis so uh, this is a book which you have to read but very selectively almost all the books written for forestry is for academic purpose you have bsc forestry you have msc forestry phd in forestry some forestry research will be going on people who will be trained will be having classes related to forestry training institutions all these places the forestry books are referred okay these are the uh, only few books which are available in forestry there have been no new books which is been published so you should be very selective in reading you know you, otherwise you will be lost you will be studying all the aspects of forestry which would not be of much use in your mains examination so you do not have to be the master uh, you just have to know that much where you can satisfactorily answer the question which is being asked there is one more book handbook of forestry by chaturvedi this is the option which i gave uh, even yesterday for general silviculture general this is a very kind of generalized kind of book having all the aspects in like you know little little uh, you know small topics there is one uh, international book uh, a book by international author john d matthews called as silviculture systems the title itself is silviculture systems there is a very book and there is one more manual uh, indian forest management handbook by bureau of indian affairs so it has given a very good illustration of the uh, pictures how the system looks like when it is 
before the system has been implemented and after the system has been implemented so in that in that entire book it's a very bulky manual and in that manual only chapter 3 of the manual should be referred you now that is what talks about silviculture systems right so these things along with other research material other materials from the training institutions everything has been researched and uh, if you do not have to want to read all these books we have an option that we have prepared uh, evolution class videos uh, along with the handouts or the slides okay handouts are like slides two slides given in a single sheet okay so that handouts and also the study material one booklet uh for silviculture systems so which includes everything so this videos along with the handouts and study material would cover everything uh which will be asked in silviculture systems and nothing would be left uh for you to study if you just study this you will be so you will be able to answer all the questions any question which is asked from silviculture systems so you will be having uh, that much of access so for getting access to these videos and hand material you might have to contact this email id or visit our website or call on this number so you will be guided how to get access to these videos and uh, resources so that is uh, for today that is uh, all i had to uh, share with you so thank you so much keep reading all the best this is me chirant signing off thank you